I decided to do this video because I know what it's like to live with a blind dog. I actually was seeking out a dog that had uh, sight issues because I'd already had a, a deaf dog and a dog with three legs and I actually sort of gravitate toward the special needs dogs. But chances are, if you have a dog and you're blessed to have that dog well into their twilight years, they're going to have some sight issues or they might go blind. And here is the best news I have for you. It's probably going to be harder on you than it is for your dog. I know it's hard to believe, but honestly, sight isn't the most important thing that they have going for them. It's actually smell, then hearing, and then their sight. So rest assured, your dog is going to be just fine after certainly a period of adjustment, especially if, like my dog, the onset of blindness came late in life. My dog was nine years old. Now, just like a human, uh, when a traumatic event has happened, your dog might react suddenly fearful, suddenly have separation anxiety. Your dog might be depressed, frustrated, might suddenly not relate well to your other animals. I mean, there's a plethora of things that you might have to deal with, but guess what? You can, and you will, because your mom, right, or your dad. So here's another bit of good news. They can do pretty much everything they did while they were sighted. Of course, you want to be a little bit more careful with stairs, um, sharp corners in the house, um, putting them in a new environment. There are things that you're just going to have to get, like baby gates for the stairs so that you can be there when you teach them to go up and down the stairs or there if they suddenly lose their way and fall down the stairs, which would be a disaster. So you want to make sure that you have protections like that on everything. Another thing that you can do is you can get, even from Amazon, um, baby bumpers, sort of the same things that people have when they have a toddler and they don't want the toddler to bash their head on the side of a coffee table. Um, another great thing that you can do is bubble wrap any area of the house that you feel could harm your dog's head. Um, I actually have quite a lot of bubble wrap in my house, but I've sort of hidden it with fabric so it doesn't look that obvious. And um, it's a great way to deal with plastic, right? Another thing that you can do is you can scent the house. Um, use scents that, you know, you have around. Any essential oils are good. And I like to put scents uh, only in a few places because you don't want to overwhelm a dog with scents because their sense of smell is already so strong. But sometimes it's a good thing to, at least at first, put maybe a drop of lavender uh, essential oil in their favorite sleeping space, right? Where their dog bed is or something like that. Or you can put it where their water dish is. Some place that you know is gonna be important and a place where the dog is constantly gonna be going back to. Another thing that you can do is you can get bells. I got some bells the minute that I got uh, Hubble Yoda, my dog, and I wore little bells around my ankles and if I had another dog in the house, I would have put a bell on their leash um, and on their collar. Now the reason is because dogs that have lost their sight, as well as their hearing, suddenly can get very startled if they're in a deep sleep or if they don't see the person approaching them. So you want to kind of give them just a little bit of um, a heads up so you don't scare them. Another thing you can do is you can purchase the Muffins Halo. This is a great little device that you can uh, put on your dog and it comes in different sizes. And uh, anytime your dog is getting ready to bump into something, something else buffers it, which is terrific. They can eat with this, they can sleep with it. And um, it's, a, it's a great thing for a blind dog to have. Um, don't think that your dog is not going to be able to do dog things. They can still play with toys. Of course, you want to get um, toys that have squeakies. There are a lot of toys that uh, you push on and they sing a song, things like that. In that case, you can even play fetch with your dog because they can hear where the where the ball is going and they can uh, trace the, um, the sound of the toys. Makes it really easy for them to play with and find. And, as soon as the you know the toy stops making the noise just go and push that button again and it starts up and your dog can play with you you will be amazed at how well that they adapt you know they're not uh, 
They're not really like humans, you know, they live in the present and they make the most of, of, of that moment. So they are our teachers because isn't that really what every single uh, self-help book we read tells us to do, to live in the moment? Dogs, cats, every single animal has that innate ability to embrace life as it is in the moment. Um, another thing that you can do is to have one place, a landing pad for your dog. You do not want to be picking up your dog and placing them in random places around the house and then they're all turned around and they don't know. Always put your dog back in one location so that they can sort of say, oh, I know where I am, I'm in the foyer and if I take like four steps to the right, I'm gonna hit a wall, things like that. And the most important thing, and I'm talking the most important thing, decide where your furniture is going to go and do not move it for any reason whatsoever. Imagine how frustrating it is for a dog to suddenly have learned the lay of the house, you know, to figure out where everything goes and all of a sudden their guardian is like, you know what, I kind of think that the coffee table really looks better where the couch is. No, make that decision and stick with it. That's the most important thing other than of course the obvious. Don't coddle your dog. Don't um, give them special attention that keeps them from enjoying their life because you're afraid. If you are a responsible guardian, you're gonna have the house bubble wrapped where you need to. You're going to have um, gates on your stairs to make sure that they don't tumble down. Not to say you can't teach them to go up and down stairs, but you do have to be careful. Um, you're gonna have uh, dogs that have little bells on them. You're gonna do everything that you need to do. You'll be scenting the house, you'll be getting toys that have sound on them. You're gonna be doing everything that you need to do. So don't over coddle your dog because let's face it, they wanna be dogs. They wanna have fun and they wanna have their autonomy. And I would say the most important thing is to remember that we are all going to get old, God willing. We will all have trouble with our sight. We will all lose our hearing. We will all have mobility issues. And we just might all end up in depends. That doesn't mean that you would expect your family to throw you out on the street or, you know, take the, the family dog and, and toss it into a shelter. When you adopt an animal, it's for life. So understand that no matter what happens, that dog or that cat or that animal, whatever it is, is looking to you, not only for a lifetime home, but to give off the energy of, I've got you. No matter what, I've got you. And I promise you, your dog will be happy and healthy and be able to deal with whatever life throws at the both of you because you will be there to make sure that everything is going to be all right. So let me just pick up my dog and show you. In case you haven't met him before, this is Hubble Yoda. Hubble Yoda is blind and Hubble Yoda is happy. Thank you, good luck. Leave comments below if you have any questions. I am happy to let you know uh, anything that I know and share it with you. I've had this boy for four years. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. Thank you.